Hi, welcome to the uh, first blog for or vidcast for March 2011. It's the 11th this year. Um, as you know, feedback is always important to us, and today, learning providers that we support here in the northwest of the UK have hopefully received a customer satisfaction survey. I personally hope that you will all find time to fill it out and highlight the areas of support that you value. Uh, please don't forget the online resources such as the blogs, blogcasts, uh, the vidcasts that you're watching now, e-magazine, e-books, TV broadcasts, etc. Continued provision of such resources may depend on your feedback. Going to have a look at seven resources as usual. Uh, it's 78 posted this year, and the first one, let's just scroll down the page until we get to them. The first one is actually Tim Tim. We'll go to the, the website. It offers uh, an incredibly large database of drawings that you can draw and, and or color online, which for family learning practitioners is ideal. What's more, uh, and probably more interest to the rest of you, is that Tim Tim drawings are free to use in a non-commercial newspaper, blog, website, etc. All that they ask is that you um, print and or add the link www.timtim.com as the source of the drawing so that others can di link directly to Tim Tim. Uh, I'll just um, sort of give you a quick overview I mean say um, you'll see on the right hand side let's just zoom in for you okay you know there's the drawing coloring online but there are various things like uh, pets computers and phones cars trucks and buses etc okay there is a huge range of resources there okay so that's the first find the second find is a blog entry from the e-learning coach. If I just go over to it straight away, it's called Four Big Ideas That Will Change the World of Training. Uh, and it goes through a number of different areas. I'll leave you to read it. Obviously, it would be pointless me reading it. Uh, but it looks at connectivism, uh, collaborative learning, situated learning and informal learning. And you can access this blog, which is well worth a closer look, um, at the website address that's at the top of the page. Third find, rattling through them quickly. Well, this will slow us down. Uh, as you will probably be aware, uh, there is an increasing number of practitioners who have been sharing their ideas and expertise through vidcasts, as I am with you which hopefully are both easy and to follow and, I hope very much, uh, helpful. The big plus about vidcasts is that they are just-in-time resources. They're available 24-7 at a time when you perhaps want them. I'm just going to run through these relatively quickly uh, so that you can see the sort of resources I'm talking about. For example, here we have Bev Evans video tutorials. They're available at the address at the top of the page. Um, the one that's on at the moment, if I can just drop back to the beginning, let's just play it. Uh, okay, th this actually is uh, one without audio. But it goes through different videos and so on. Um, so that's the sort of example. It was multimodal PowerPoints, uh, how to create them for your classroom. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one, which I've had some excellent feedback about already, is Ian Anderson. Let's just go into it. Um, his video tutorials uh, is called Under 10 Minutes. And it's where he and other practitioners, let's go to the top of the page so you can see it, uh, are 
sharing vidcasts that, as it suggests, are no longer than 10 minutes. The latest one here, which came out on the 6th of March, a couple of days ago, is using Slide Rocket as a presentation tool. Give Hi, an so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the Slide Rocket application, which you can use online via SlideRocket.com. I've actually got the app installed within Google Chrome, so to get in there all I need to do is just go through to Slide Rocket. Okay, you can see uh, quality is pretty good uh, and the resources are well worth a closer look. The next uh, set of vidcasts is one that's produced by uh, Kevin McLaughlin. Uh, it's 30 second video tips for practitioners daily. Uh, as you'd expect, some of them may be appropriate for you, some of them may not. But it's a daily 30-second uh, video clip with some ideas. Today's tip, as you can see, is ideas for a school garden. Um, yesterday was backing up your own work, the day before, clean out your cupboards and so on. Okay, those are the sort of resources that we're looking at. The next one, teaching videos, there are so many uh, vidcasts in teaching video, this is just one of them. It's the ICT section and again you'll see that there are a, a number of clips here including, let me just scroll down a little bit so I can zoom in and you can see them. Okay, things like history of communication, a brief history, uh, creating a pencil pot, Google look up in Google, making maths games, etc. I just scroll down so you can see some of them. Okay, that's one. The other one here is in fact the teaching videos homepage. And if I zoom up to the top, oh, wrong one. Hang on a minute. Okay, you'll see that there is literacy, math, science, ICT design technology, geography, history, art, music, PE, RE, modern foreign languages and uh, personal and social health education videos. Um, you can see some of the different clips that are on there. Okay, All of those are well worth a closer look. And of course I'd be wrong not to mention the clips that I've produced here. Uh, these are the UNET clips with the link at the top of the page there. Let me just cancel that. So I'll click OK. It doesn't really matter which. Um, these are video clips that I have produced for using new and emerging technologies. Find number four. Uh, it's BBC Learning. This is their website. Providing resources for students and teachers continues to be critical work of BBC Learning. I'm sure that most of you are familiar with Bite Size, which is the key offering for young people, alongside sites for teachers, parents and adult learners. You'll see if I scroll down and zoom in for you, the most popular subjects at the moment are there. But of course, don't forget there are other subjects that you may find useful. For example... building skills, okay, various craft resources, environmental studies, um, media studies, music, performing arts. And of course, somebody asked me earlier in the week about sports and fitness. Okay, so those are all sorts of links that you will find on the BBC website. Again, well worth a, a closer look. Fifth find. The fifth find um, <laughs> brings back memories, I suppose, more than anything else. Uh, when I was at an event run by our um, partner RSC down in Easton, um, where I was actually born and brought up, uh, Alistair Clark did a workshop and he actually had us lining up from the earliest adopters of computers through to the most recent I hate to admit it, but I was the earliest. Uh, and when I came across this infographic, and I'm just going to click on the page so that it enlarges, this is the history of operating systems. And I must admit, I was surprised that in the 1950, that the first operating system, which was GMOS, um, 
was produced for uh, coordination between jobs, creating batches and using runtime libraries to um, simplify common commands. And it was created by General Motors for IBM. And again, if we scroll down the page, you'll see the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and of course up to date, and including dissecting Linux. It may well be useful for those of you who are engaged in history and or uh, computing. Uh, penultimate find. Uh, I came across this. Uh, I'm going to go to Screener because this is where you're going to find these resources and many others. Um, Moodle, Moodle videos and tutorials. I suppose a big thank you for bringing these to my attention is Moodle News that you may want to have a look at. You can Google that. But the video screencasts that I'm going to talk about, as I say, are on screen. Uh, screener, as you can see, is screencasts for use on Twitter. For those of you who don't like Twitter, that doesn't mean say you shouldn't look at the videos. When I looked at this first, Sean Brandt, and I'll go on to his uh, page now, had produced uh, 120 videos. I'm not sure how many there are there. Yeah, 120 screencasts, many of which are about Moodle. Um, you know, this one is about preventing Moodle forums from creating e email overload. The topics range from beginner to more advanced and most videos are under five minutes uh, things on Moodle that I found were adding events to uh, using the calendar um, using assignments creating pages and resources displaying directories using zip files to up mo upload multiple files improving improving your course aesthetics and there was a lot, lot more. Um, for any of you who are using Moodle and or want to find out more, this is a site that you perhaps ought to go and have a closer look at. And finally, there is a... I, I know that more and more people are using Dropbox. I do, as so do several of my colleagues, for sharing resources fairly quickly and also for you to be able to access them wherever you happen to be and you're online. It goes on this video of how to set up a Dropbox account, how to upload files, uh, create shared folders, etc. I'll just do a quick play so that you can hopefully see it. Well, Check. Welcome to Dropbox. Dropbox is an online storage facility which you can upload files of any size to. You're only restricted to two gigabytes of online space, which is free to set up. I would actually advise every teacher to have a Dropbox account because one, USB sticks are constantly breaking, two, USB sticks are constantly being lost, and three, sharing files with USB sticks is uh, tedious and can be quite annoying when somebody forgets to bring it to school. So Dropbox, let's set up a quick account. On the right hand side here you go to dropbox.com by the way, and on the right hand side you will see a create an account with the drop down link. I've created the okay, content. I'm going to um, stop it there. I mean, so there were some pretty good arguments as to why you'd use this in, instead of um, using USB sticks. Uh, I'll leave you to decide. Watch the video and make an informed decision as to whether you would use Dropbox or not. Before I go, just a reminder that if you visit our live stream um, television, uh, channel you will be able to watch a loop of videos that are currently on at the moment uh, it's on paused at the moment uh, and or uh, to come in and watch our live broadcast which will be on Monday the 14th of March uh, and it's on the second Monday of every month from 12.45 to 1.15 and we look forward to seeing you then that's all for today's vidcast. I hope that you can join us again in the uh, near future. And I hope there was something there for all of you.